Mario Cristobal and Miami have absolutely been crushing it lately. Quarterbacks, wide receivers, tight ends, defensive backs. So in recruiting, is it offensive tackle? Is that what we get next? You are locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus and longtime South Florida sports radio vet, including pregame and postgame for Miami Hurricanes football. Thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen today. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. And today's episode is brought to you by the great folks at LinkedIn. I'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidate you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Terms and conditions apply. So we look, my friends... At offensive tackles, the biggest fish in that OT pond is going to be making his announcement on July 4th. The top offensive tackle in the class of 2023, Francis Maui Goa, will announce on Monday. So, you know, save your fireworks depending on, you know, which way he goes. He's choosing between the likes of Miami, Alabama, Tennessee, Florida, and USC. Folks, this is a five-star offensive tackle six foot five 200 sorry 330 pounds I was about to say 230 pounds but that might be if he like skips breakfast for the next 15 years six foot five 330 pounds he has got insane strength watch his tape watch his workouts this guy is straight up mauling people you can understand why Francis Malioga is rated as high as he is and yeah he is considering Miami Miami are among his finalists I don't know if anyone really has a great sense what he's going to decide on Monday, but I believe Miami is in a good spot here for three reasons. Number one, momentum. You see how that's gone with Miami's commits over the past couple of weeks. You see how Jaden Rashada especially started just a trend of blue chippers announcing Miami. We refer to it as an avalanche. Some of our viewers have referred to it as like a volcano erupting and just covering all the other programs with hot molten Miami lava. So we can't get them all. Like we can't get all the blue chippers as we found out with Jackson Howard, you know, picked LSU over Miami, but we can get plenty more here, guys. Uh, number two, Miami is a great place for offensive linemen, right? Any elite offensive tackle guard who picks Miami is in a great spot because the coaching you get from Alex Mirabal is impeccable. And of course, Mario Cristobal is a former offensive line coach and a former offensive lineman. So they will take care of the big eaters and they will develop them to get them into the NFL and have them dominate there. And then number three, why I think Miami is in a good spot for Francis Maui Goa. Miami is literally like family for this player. Miami's D-line coach, Joe Salavea, not only shares Polynesian heritage, but he's literally an uncle of Francis Maui Goa. So there are connections there. Let me bring in my brother from another mother, uh, our good pal, Brad Tejeda, who does an awesome job. Uh, Kane's Insight. Brad, how you doing, sir? Alex, thank you as always, man. You know, it's always a pleasure talking Kane's football with one of the best in yourself, man. And hey, it's it's a big day tomorrow. I got the fireworks lined up, and it's not because of July 4th, man. It's because of the guy you just named. Three o'clock Eastern time on my end. We got one of the top targets in all of you know high school football. One of the biggest guys on our board, and, and that's Francis Maigoa, man. The IMG tackle who's rated 99.54, which, I mean, just to put that in perspective, if he ends up being a Miami Hurricane, Alex, he would be the ninth best recruit of all time for the Miami Hurricanes. I did not and know he, that. Wow. Yes. And it would move it would move Miami up almost 30 points just alone with Francis committing to Miami, jumping the recruiting class from 14 to number eight just by one guy alone. So that kind of puts in his perspective just on the recruiting end, how much Francis means to a program like Miami. And you talked about it right from the beginning, right? It's got to go to the family atmosphere, the relationships that we have. And Francis has talked time and time again about the coaching staff of Coach Mary Ball and Coach Cristobal. This is a staff and two guys individually that has recruited Francis for, you know, three to four years now going back to Oregon. 
and the ties are there, right? You talk about his uncle and coach Salabea. But with teams like Tennessee and now Alabama being late in the mix, it, it is very close to determine who is going to get that big-time target in Francis. You know, we're coming down to the wire. We got tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern. Nobody quite knows where he's going to go, but I got a great feeling that with the things that we got lined up, man, I think we have a very good chance of landing this guy. And like you mentioned, the domino falling in Jaden Rashada, it's starting to pick up a lot of momentum for not only Francis, but a lot of other big name targets. And you talk about the productivity of what Miami offers, you know, the family atmosphere, the culture, you know, him being American Samoa doing his uh, live announcement all the way in Hawaii. Wow. You know, you look at Tennessee and Alabama, if, if he likes the Hawaii vibes, Alex, Tennessee and Alabama is not the place he wants to look for. <laughs> but I can tell you, Miami is all about culture. It's very diverse. And it's the city to be. It's paradise, like we like to call it. And you talk about the relativity and, and the productivity. Mario Cristobal and Alex Maribal has put in 12 offensive linemen in the NFL draft. You know, most recent Penny Swell, who everyone knows is one of the top offensive linemen. So that's one thing that they are able to offer and show, you know, Francis, hey, we have the development, we have the guys, we know how to get the guys from one level to the next. Where you look at a program like Tennessee, you know, uh, Coach Heupel over there, he's only had four offensive linemen uh, drafted under him, and I believe his OC and offensive linemen over at Tennessee haven't had any guys drafted on that offensive line. So if you want to look for uh, the right program to get coached and developed, it seems like Miami is the place to be. That is some of the stats you dropped there as well. I hadn't heard. That was tremendous stuff. We're joined here by Brad Tejeda, Kane's Insight. This man covers recruiting like no other. Brad, thank you so much for taking the time and joining us today. So as far as Francis Malioa goes, because Miami obviously very much in the mix for him among his finalists and among, I know he's got like a top five or six list. I think Miami's probably more like top three even on that list. But Miami's in the mix for other offensive tackles. They're in the mix for another five-star in uh, Samson Okunlola, so what is do you think is Maui Goa definitely the the better of those two players? And is there one or the other you feel maybe better about will land in Miami? You know, I, me personally, you know, when we first got this staff together and I, I came to the realization that a lot of these five stars we had no chance of getting, we were definitely, you know, going to climb up the list. Francis was number one on my board. You know, it, mm. it's not very often that, you know, an offense alignment is at the top of your board. It's usually the quarterback, wide receiver, the skill positions. And you're seeing with this staff, you know, the last month or two, we've landed all the skill positions, the quarterbacks, the receivers, even a recent cornerback and Robert Stafford, who we just got committed uh, a couple of days ago. But now it's time for the trenches. And when you got a guy like Coach Cristobal, Coach Mirabal, Coach Savea, um, and even a guy like Jason Taylor, who I'll mention a, a lot, you know, with some of these recruits when I talk to him, he seems to be a name that keeps floating around on why Miami seems to be one of their top choices in Jason Taylor. But yeah, Samson Okunola, um, he's also another big time target. You know, when you have the type of staff that we have put together, Alex, a lot of these options that we have is something we're not familiar with. We're, we're like a kid in a candy shop, man. <laughs> you, you, you had, I mean, you, you mentioned, you know, Francis and Samson, but then you also got you know, someone like Olas uh, uh, Alenin, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. You got Monroe Freeling. Yeah. Um, you even got uh, Peyton Kirkland and uh, Tommy Kinsler, who's on Flip Watch as well. Oh, but yeah. man, my, uh, Miami and Coach Cristobal, they're doing a great job of recruiting not only all over the nation, but all over the world, right? You got Samson Okola, uh, who's a Nigerian descent. You got Collins, who's a Ghana descent. We got Francis, who's, you know, American Samoan. And then you got uh, Alenin, who, who's from Finland, right? So we're, we're recruiting all over the world, not just the nation. And it seems like, you know, not just the nation, but when you come to South Florida, Mario is starting to build that trench in that wall where if you're a recruit or a top coach in the country, if you're visiting South Florida, you're going to have to stop at a big red light. And that's Mario Cristobal. You're going to have to look both ways before you cross that street because he's coming for everybody. Oh, man. So all right, we, we got so much more. Uh, I, I got another offensive tackle that I want to uh, to get Brad to elaborate on. Plus, we got to talk about a couple of the big time defensive ends and linebackers, because every time we talk recruiting, our viewers and our listeners are asking us, hey, this is all fine and good. Look at these receivers coming in. We got a defensive back in. When are we getting the linebackers and when are we getting the offensive tackles? 
I'll tell you what, we got LinkedIn. LinkedIn, welcome to the Locked On family. As the sun comes out and small businesses are back in business, LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier to grow your team. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the people that you want to interview faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs. It's so easy, guys, to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Yeah, it's a big network. Then add your job and the purple uh, hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. And guys, I've been on the other side of this, right? As being a broadcast professional, I do a lot of freelance work. I have gotten work through LinkedIn before people have found me through LinkedIn jobs. So I know this works. I am a success story on the other side of it. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. We are talking with Brad Tejeda from Canes Insight. So we did see you you alluded to this one, Brad, that uh, possible flip watch offensive tackle Tommy Kinsler decommitted from the University of Florida on Friday. G5 Billy keeps taking more of these L's in recruiting. So Kinsler decommits. The crystal balls are coming uh, for the Miami Hurricanes or towards the Miami Hurricanes on this one. Do you think Miami will land this player? Yeah, with Tommy Kinsler, um, this is a, a young man that is playing right, right in my backyard out here in Ocala. And, I mean, you would think, you know, someone being that close to the University of Florida and him recently committed to Florida, um, that he would be locked in. But as you know, with G5 Billy, he hasn't been able to get out of the locker for the last <laughs> month, man. And Mario just keeps – Mario just keep keeps pushing books and everything in there to worry. There's no way he can get out. And uh, this seems like another another guy that's going to end up flipping to the University of Miami. And it's for good reasons. I mean, it seems like that that program in UF is a dumpster fire right now. And nobody wants to commit. Anybody that is on commit watch either flips or pushes back their commitment. Um, and as we know, that's never a good sign. And, yeah, man, this is this is a young man that I, I, I expect to be a hurricane. And I, I could see him playing that guard position, big body frame, um, plays with, with that nasty mentality that you would want. And, uh, I mean, again, any offensive lineman that Coach Cristobal and Maribel is going after, you got to have some faith and, and common sense that, hey, these guys know what they're doing and they're going to develop and put these guys in the right position. Um, so, yeah, I expect Tommy Kinsler um, to be a Miami Hurricane, no doubt. So, you know, something something else we see going on in recruiting, just in a general sense, because we've now been seeing it with commits Miami is getting and even now flips where, you know, not only is Miami actually getting and not, again, you can't get everybody. So I don't need you to guys. I don't need you guys to hit me up with examples in the comments like, well, we didn't get this guy, that guy. Yeah, you're not going to get everybody. But we're seeing recruits now actually picking Miami over the likes of Alabama and Ohio State. And we even saw Miami uh, on Saturday flip a 2024 commit from Georgia to Miami. And I had a feeling, I know you did as well, Brad, that this one was going to come and it happened yesterday. Class of 2024, uh, safety, I, should, I don't know if I, if I said cornerback, I was mistaken. He's a safety and an excellent one. 2024 safety, Antoine Action Jackson from Fort Lauderdale Dillard has flipped from Georgia to Miami. So, yeah, we got to wait an extra year to see this guy on the field. But uh, he's played a lot of cornerback in high school, but he's his excellent reactions and instincts uh, project him better as a safety. I think that's the uh, the position where he's going to work better at the collegiate level. Uh, so, Brad, I know that this one, this one is still a year in advance, but I still get excited over class of 2024. How big is this and how good is Jackson? Oh, man, he is phenomenal. He is probably the top safety in the nation, in my opinion. Um, I was able to talk to Antoine Axon Jackson yesterday uh, when he did commit. And, man, what an impressive young man. This is a guy who who the mentality um, that he carries upon himself is, is very extraordinary, right? Um, when you talk to a lot of these current recruits that we're going after and even guys that we already have on board, like Ray Ray Joseph, who was another guy I talked to recently after his commitment, 
the mentality that they have and the realization of what this program is starting to become. It, it, it's very, it's a lot easier for, for the young kids in the, in the backyard that we're trying to go after to believe in what this program is doing. Um, and, and it gives a lot of respect um, to the coaching staff that we're currently have on this uh, team, right? And with Antoine Action Jackson from Dillard High School, like you mentioned, um, when I talk to him, he models his game after Jaleel Alexander. Um, and when you turn on the tape, you know, it, it's it's pretty outspoken on why he models his, his game after him. Quick hips, uh, turns his head around, excellent ball skills. Um, and, man, he he's one of those guys that he doesn't see anybody on the playing field, man. Um, he he kind of has an own world of his own, even though he's got another year of high school football. He's already training with, you know, college athletes, players in the NFL. And um, he loves Miami. You know, one thing that he mentioned the most on why he decommitted from Georgia, you know, national champion this past year to come to Miami is the simple fact of he's realizing he can see what this program is starting to become. And there's no better way to put on than put on for the crib, right? And this is a guy who is locked in to the recruiting class. He's also um, looking for other guys to recruit. Uh, like JoJo Trader, Jer Jeremiah Smith, TJ Capers, and others who are all at the top of the list at their positions, also in our own backyard. So locking in someone like Antoine Action Jackson for your 2024 class to, to build momentum it, is going to be very bright. And just a quick nugget, um, this is a young man who looked up to Duke Johnson, one of the greatest yes. running backs to ever come out of the University of Miami. Um, and that was his role model, man. He, he always rocked the number eight because of Duke Johnson. And to see it come full circle and to now, you know, possibly put on for the U is great things. And uh, talking to him and even a guy in Jeremiah Smith the other day, man, the, these guys are built different. And you're going to hear that a lot with the recruits that we're going after. And uh, the future's bright for 2024 and even 2023, man. Go, jumping from 42 to 14 in the recruiting class <laughs> in just a week is tremendous. And I expect us to keep going up. Yeah, man. And obviously, uh, well, let's talk about the, the flip side of all this, because, you know, these are all verbal commits until December. And then again, in February, when they have the windows to sign national letters of intent, I'd like to think that the bonds being forged between these hard commits, these verbal commits is a close to unbreakable bond. And that, you know, we're not going to have, hopefully, fingers crossed, anybody, at least not anybody big, flipping from Miami somewhere else between now and in December. But in your experience covering recruiting, Brad, how how much does the upcoming season, like the actual results on the field matter to reinforce that? Because obviously, if Miami has a really, really good season, uh, they're going to attract even more talent. But if Miami, God forbid, does struggle, in the 2022 season and maybe not even meet expectations with the first year of this coaching staff, does that make it more likely some of these players are like, you know what, the spell, the spell is broken. Miami may not be quite where I thought it was. Maybe I think about going somewhere else. Yeah. You know, I think, I mean, obviously with recruiting, you know, half the battle is the relationships and what you build, but the other half is producing wins on the football field. Right. And I think at the end of the day, Miami has to do that. You look at our current schedule coming up and what we got to go after. I think, you know, it's all there for, for the written. I think this is the year that Miami is going to have to prove not only to the recruits, not only to the fans, but to the nation that Miami could potentially come back to college football um, and be one of the top programs in the nation. And I think, you know, the relationships you're building with these recruits is going to start to, you know, come to fruition. And it, it's going to be a lot easier for the staff when the football season started because a lot of these guys that they're going after – they're going to be teammates on the next level, not just, you know, in college possibly, but in high school. You talk about the pipeline that they're starting to build over at IMG, especially, you know, you had Jalil Skinner last year from IMG, who's going to be one of the monsters uh, in the tight end room for the next three to four years. But now you got in a guy like Riley Williams, who just committed, you know, uh, to Miami and also is going to be transferring to IMG. You got a guy, Malik Bryant, you know, linebacker guy that we're going after from IMG. Uh, Francis Mayagoa, who we've been talking about a lot, is from IMG. And then uh, even more recent, Jaden Wayne, Wayne. Uh, Washington Adam, defensive end. He's been traveling all around the nation, you know, doing recruiting uh, visits. And now he's going to be traveling to Bradenton, Florida, to play his last uh, high school football at IMG. So that's like five to six guys right there that Miami's going after that are all going to be playing high school football together. So as long as one guy is bought in, which I believe most of them are, 
um, they're going to help keep that glue together to where if something was to fall off on the wheels during the football season, I have a complete confidence that what this program and what the staff is doing is going to come to fruition and we're going to see some great things in the future. Well, I want to talk about Jaden Wayne. I want to talk about one of the other top defensive ends in the class and one of the top linebackers in the class as well, right after we talk about betonline.net. It's your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. Find out all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's Major League Baseball season and all your college football futures, guys. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering info, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. So I'm glad it was the perfect segue that you touched on Jaden Wayne, who is going to be taking his talents to IMG Academy for a season. Will he be taking his talents to Coral Gables after that? Because the crystal balls are now rolling in for that five star defensive end, who's I think six six foot four, 245, 250. He's built like an absolute beast. Do you think he's going to pick Miami? You know, I, the the closer we get to his commitment date, which I believe is going to be July, uh, July 9th, which is yes, his 9th. Yep. July 9th, which is his sister's birthday. He'll be announcing at 12 o'clock Eastern time. Man, it seems like the closer we get to that day, Alex, the more I feel even more confident that Jaden Wayne will be a Miami Hurricane. Um, this is a young man. Like I said before on the show and others, Mario was the first person to give him an offer and to believe in him. And that goes a very long way. Um, when, when you talk to him, he mentions not only Mario Cristobal, but Jason Taylor um, being a key influence on his recruiting process and kind of teaching him different techniques, talking about the scheme and what he could potentially be for the Miami Hurricanes. And Miami has done a very good job in recent years, definitely the last two years, of showing that they could bring in a guy of that tangible you know, size and ability and produce them to the next level and get them into the NFL with guys like Jalen Phillips and Greg Russo. So I expect Jaden Wayne you know, to be a Miami hurricane when it's all said and done. Okay. What about um, uh, the guy who's really been my pet project? I'm a huge fan of this player um, from Ghana, came to the United States to play basketball, converting to football, six foot seven projects as a defensive end. It's got all the God given talent in the world. Collins, a champo. I was hoping this is one that we could have landed on, uh, on Friday, but he has pushed his announcement back. Uh, do you think him pushing back? Is that, is that a good thing or a bad thing for Miami, or does anybody know? You know, I mean, I think at this point you still don't know, but um, him pushing the date back, I, I, I was very confident um, when he did have the original date that he was going to end up committing to Miami. That would have been on July 1st. Um, shout out to Canes Unfiltered on Twitter. If you guys have a Twitter, you definitely want to check them out. Um, they have a space that goes on pretty much 24 hours, seven days a week. And, you know, Collins – uh, was in the space just a few days ago, and we were able to talk to him, you know, chop it up, talk not just football, but outside the game of football, man. And I got to tell you, this has been one of my favorite recruits after talking to him, man. This is 6'7", 254 pounds. Uh, he's from Ghana, like you said, former back basketball star living in Anaheim, California. But, man, this is a young man that has been away from his family for almost two years now. Alex, um, every recruiting visit that he's gone to has been completely on his own. He doesn't have, you know, mom and dad to, to be there by his side. And just, you know, after the game of football, the intelligence, the mindset he has, he's very smart and he knows exactly, you know, what his intangibles bring to the table. Even though he's only played one year of football, he knows when he goes on these recruiting visits, there's more to the life of just football. And he wants to know what these schools, what these universities, what these staff can offer besides the game of football. He knows he can potentially be, you know, in the NFL first round. But what can you offer me off the field? And one of the key things to him is, you know, family atmosphere. He wants to feel like where he belongs is family. Um, he made it very clear, you know, that won't, not only his family atmosphere, but him and Samson Akunola, um, this is another guy that we're going after, offensive lineman uh, from Nigeria, who was also on an official visit um, with Collins. Uh, he and his mom kind of brought Collins under his wing during this last official visit and kind of, you know, made him feel like, you know, I could be the stepson 
to to uh, Samson and the family. And uh, I'm really anxious to see when Samson uh, makes his official announcement. Um, it should be any time now from uh, speaking to him the last couple days. He'll be announcing when his commitment date is. And as long as his commitment date, Alex, is before Collins, um, I feel really confident that Collins will still be a Miami Hurricane because I, I feel like Samson um, is locked in with the U. Um, and I think with those two guys, you add in a Jaden Wayne, possibly a Francis Mayoga. Um, and we didn't even talk about Monroe Freeling and uh, Mr. Yeah. Alien uh, from uh, Finland. Those two guys, <laughs> you're talking about four to five trench monsters that could potentially be, you know, the foundation for the next three to four years. But yeah, man, the the uh, the Ghana native who is, you know, also a football star coming up, he wants to be be a pilot, Alex, when it's all said and done. He wants to fly in the planes, wow. uh, overlook the, the world, man. So it, it, it's very awesome to talk to some of these recruits. And even, you know, a guy like Ray Ray Joseph, who we have locked in, man, his mentality, you know, talking to a guy like him, he gave me Santana Moss vibes, man. He, he sounded like Ooh, he like sounded it. like someone who's been in the program for three years already. He's he's super bought in. And man, he is a dog. He I mean, he wants to be on kick return, punt return. He <laughs> wants to knock someone's head off on, on the on the kickoffs. He wants to do it all, man. I'm I'm very excited for the talent that Miami's adding to this class. I got to ask you one more because uh, my listeners are they're, they're going to storm my office if I don't uh, ask you about a linebacker because they're always asking linebackers, linebackers. What's your outlook on Malik Bryant? Because it seems like um, Charlie Strong has really been putting in the work for this uh, four star linebacker from Orlando. Uh, how, how you feeling about this one today? Man, you know, with with a guy like Charlie Strong and Coach Steele uh, as your two linebacker guys, right? We, we've been with our hands in the air. Well, like, hey, man, when are we getting some linebackers, right? We yeah. got these great coaches. We know they could develop. We know what they do on the field. When are we going to start getting some big names? And, you know, Malik Bryant is one of the top guys in the country, you know, with Alabama, Miami, and Florida in the mix. He'll be making his announcement July 23rd in Miami. And from everything I've heard, man, it's great things for the Hurricanes. It, it seems like Malik Bryant could possibly be wearing that orange and green. And this is a guy that can play all over the field. Um, and even though people may think it's a package deal with him and Peyton Kirkland, um, I, I beg to differ. And I, I don't know where we sit with a guy like Peyton Kirkland, but with a guy like Malik Bryant, I, I believe Miami's at the top of the list. And we've done a very good job. Uh, I know his his mother and family, very, uh, very intrigued. And they love the Miami atmosphere. They love being around Coral Gables and they love the fan base. Um, and, you know, I, I know a lot of people may differ on this, but the fan base, you know, in recruiting these days, it does bring a, a lot to the table, man. And there's no other fan base like the Miami Hurricanes. As you saw recently, you know, we were trending the Francis to the U. Yes. Uh, and it was it was going all over the place, man. And uh, it, it seems like we're doing the work. Uh, I'm excited. And uh, it should be a great July 4th, hopefully, for the Miami Hurricanes. I hope so. Awesome stuff. Brad Tejeda. Make sure you check out his work, canesinsight.com. Follow him on Twitter at Tejeda Brad. And thank everyone so much for being a part of this episode. Get more on the ACC by making Locked On ACC your second listen every day. Host Candace Cooper and the local experts of Locked On take you across the ACC in 30 minutes or less. Make Locked On ACC your second listen. And thank you for making us your first listen. We'll be back tomorrow. I, I think we will be anyway. You know what we're going to do? Because tomorrow's the 4th of July. I think what I'm going to do is, uh, whether Miami gets him or not, uh, I'm going to do a Maui Yoga special. So after after he commits, we'll chat about it. Here's what Miami got. Here's what Miami missed out on. And then who could be the next options? We'll do something like that tomorrow. Before that, I'll just be grilling like a villain. Uh, so we'll talk to you guys next time on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.